Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm Crufts welcome to the judging of the Terrier Group at Crufts 2012. It gives me very great pleasure to introduce to the Crufts Arena our judge for the Terriers this evening, Mr. Paolo Dondina from Italy, who is now being escorted into the ring by Mr. Gerald King, Chairman of the Crufts Committee. We are extremely happy to see Paolo return to the Crufts Big Ring. His previous visit was as the best in show judge for 2011. In 1975, he was the co-owner of the Crufts Best in Show. We've just seen Royal the judge Royal coming into the ring, Paolo Dondina, last year's best in show judge. He was actually the co-owner of the 1975 best in show winner, but here come our dogs for the Terrier Group. He's judged extensively around the world. He says that he's both honoured and grateful to be among such wonderful dogs and the most enthusiastic there he is, dog people of the, the Terrier world. Breed Judge. Ladies and gentlemen, may I ask you to put your hands together and show your appreciation for this evening's Terrier Breed Judge, Paolo Bondina. <laughs> Generous applause for we Dr. Dondina. This is Fizz, the Airedale Terrier, two years, nine months old, owned by Olive Jackson and Mary Swash. Mary Swash handling there. The Bedlington Terrier, this one Merlin, belonging to Mrs. Dorothy Owen. By the way, this is the... Border Terrier. Now we have the Bull Terrier. The English Bull Terrier, Archie. The Miniature Bull Terrier. Yes, the Miniature Bull Terrier next. This is Piran, two and a half years old. Owned by Mr. and Mrs. Barrett from Yorkshire. Nigel Barrett handling. The Cairn Terrier, Pam Harding, handled in the ring by Alison Rag. And next on show, the Chesky Terrier. This is the Chesky Terrier, Seska, age six, Wendy Tobjanski, lives in Cheshire, in Shropshire, now, I beg your pardon. Dandy Dinmont Terrier. The Dandy Dinmont, bred by Glenn Tinsley, handled by Hugo Cuedo in the ring. The Smooth Fox Terrier. This is Lisa. Owned by Michan Janas from Hungary, another foreign entry here. The Wire Fox Terrier. Anne Mushan. And Mourn, my apologies. The Glen of Imal Terrier. The Glen of Imal Terrier, seven year old Barney. Ruth Welsh is the owner. Come from Bognor Regis in Sussex. And now the Irish Terrier. John Aver is handling in the ring. This is the Irish Terrier, owned by Tony Barker, Victoria Malzon, Malzoni Jr. Distinctive colour of the Kerry Blue Terrier, Chelsea, this four-year-old bitch. Comes from California. And next we have the Lakeland Terrier. The Lakeland Terrier, all the way from Germany, handled by Andrew Westwood. This is Sonny. Five-year-old Roxy here. Mick, Jill and Stacey Oxley own this in Sheffield. Mick Oxley handling. Next in the ring, we have the Norfolk Terrier. The Norfolk Terrier, bred, owned and handled by Cathy Morgan Thompson. This is Oscar. Followed by the Norwich Terrier. The Norwich Terrier next. Leslie Crawley and Matthew Oddy own this in Selby in Yorkshire. Leslie handling. It's called Paris, 15 months old, this dog. Margaret Hooley bred the Parson Russell Terrier. His name's Ringo. And now we have the Scottish Terrier. The Scottish Terrier next. Followed by the Celium Terrier. The Celium Terrier. 
bred by Sarah Hawkes, owned by Sarah Hawkes with Mrs. J. Bledge. Next in, we have the Sky Terrier. This is Lampard, two-year-old dog, Sue Breeze from Swaddling Coat. The soft-coated Wheaton Terrier, chaos with the familiar handler, Liz Dunhill. Now we have the Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Biggest entry on the day, the Staffordshire Bull Terrier. This is Alfie, two years, ten months old. Martin Sherlock is the owner, Robin Melia handling in the ring. They come from Ireland. The Welsh Terrier. The Welsh Terrier, owned and handled by Sally Poole, actually handled by Andrew Hunt in the ring. From Bellwood in Canada, this is a three and a half year old Benny, owned by Carol Hufnagel. As all of these dogs now settle into, my, into position, it is my pleasure to hand you over to the commentators for the Terrier group this evening, Jonathan Daltrey and Annette Oliver. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is now my very great pleasure, along with Annette, Paolo Dondina, last year's Best in Show judge, judging the Terrier group this evening. And in this group, there are breeds designated as high profile because their make and shape can mean they're prone to health problems. Best of breed winners from these high profile breeds have all been checked by the appointed veterinary surgeon before competing tonight, and none are absent. Down the lineup, there's the Airedale, a characteristic lamb like Bedlington. These breeds have often been portrayed by painters and writers alike. Powerhouse of a border terrier, of the bull terrier and the little miniature bull terrier. And the Cairn, one of my favourites, and uh, the Dandy Dinmont with the top knot, smooth fox, and the wire fox terrier. Which in turn comes from the Latin terror. The Glen of Imal, the Irish Terrier, sleek lines there, and the characteristic coat of the Kerry Blue. Manchester Terrier standing very proud there. The little Norwich, I beg your pardon, the little Norfolk. There's the Norwich with the pricked ears. Familiar Parson Russell, the gorgeous little Scotty and the Celium. Sky with those massive ears. <laughs> Staffordshire, the Welsh Terrier, and bring up the rear, the Westie. It's a lovely lineup. I like, I enjoy looking at the Terrier group. I think they're wonderful. And we're looking at the female, number 1590. This is the Australian Terrier that's come in late, scooted in. We actually don't have any commentary notes for it, so I'm not sure who it is. There we are, Sill Hill Sweet Pea. But it's the Airedale Terrier that's on the move at the moment. This is champion jockey time to party. Fizz, owned by Olive Jackson and Mary Swash, who bred them, of course. The king of all terriers. Very strong scenting powers of the Airedale mean that the breed has been widely... Powerful dog, glorious head, and a lovely profile there. Ladies and gentlemen, the best of breed winning Airedale Terrier, 15906. Now we're looking at the Australian Terrier. The name, of course, was just given to us then. This is champion Seal Hill Sweet Pea. The Australian Terrier, the origins are said to be along similar lines to those of the Australian Silky, which is, of course, in the toy group. We saw them on Thursday. Developed in the 19th century by Australians using native British Terrier breeds. Very popular breed in uh, Australia. Two distinct colours. Blue and tan and all red, as this one is here. Cheerful, lively, smart little dog, a rugged sort of hard bit neck uh, appearance. Ready for anything approach to life. Plenty of exercise, plenty of play. But he's gained ground here too. Two distinct colours, blue and tan and all red. Affectionately known as the Aussie. Ladies and gentlemen, a good family one, dog, this little one. Champion Bisbee Beachcomber, Merlin, is three years old, owned, bred and handled by Dorothy, Dorothy Owen. 
Don't let that lamb-like appearance fool you. Graceful and lithe, this is a muscular little dog. No sign of weakness or coarse coarseness. And of course, the coat, terribly important. It's very distinctive. That glorious head, narrow and deep, lithe, athletic body. And the coat is said to have an almost linty feel to it. Standing well out from the skin, as you can see there all over, and the characteristic trim in the head. Little Bedlington capable of galloping at high speed, but they should have a nice jaunty action like this. Very distinctive, and this one giving a nice performance in the ring. Well, this is a multi-champion from Sweden, uh, Nord Toftehill Game On. Don't know what its pet name is. The Border Terrier, just the sort of dog one would expect to have its origins, though, in the border between England and Scotland. There are 264 of them here today. I think looking at a typical Border Terrier, you won't get the impression that nature were left to itself and dogs just bred naturally without man selecting the matings. The end result would be something very much along this dog's lines. It is a lovely dog. The breed standard is terse and to the point. It outlines exactly the qualities required for the dog that's expected to go to ground after a fox. Good bone, not heavy, a chest that's not too wide for him. Also needs to have stamina to keep up with a horse. Basically a worker, perfectly capable of being an active member of Hamley. The Border Terrier. This English Bull Terrier was bred by Mr. and Mrs. Moses, owned by Mr. and Mrs. Matheson, and handled by Rebecca Matheson in the ring. His name's Archie, champion Chamos whispered secret at Blazing Bullies. That characteristic egg-shaped head in profile, ear set very important, using his ears all the time, those little triangle eyes glinting it with expression. Solid, strong body. Supported on strong, firm, athletic legs. Hugely powerful jaws, as you can see there, and a smiling expression. Although this is a big dog, a heavy dog, the movement should be free, well-knit, smoothly covering the ground. Nice tail action, like he owns the place, and they want to have a little game on the corner as well. The Bull Terrier. We downsize now to the miniature Bull Terrier. Standard is pretty much the same as the Bull Terrier, with the exception of their size. They shouldn't be higher than 35.5 centimetres. That's 14 inches in old money. This is Piran, a two-and-a-half-year-old dog, owned by Nigel Bennett and uh, Mrs. Barrett. Uh, I beg your pardon, Barrett, not Bennett. Uh, Nigel Barrett is actually Hanley in the ring. They come from Yorkshire. This dog's won seven cc's. Similar... Examples of the Bull Terrier have been known since the early 19th century, but they fell out of favour in the early part of the uh, 20th century. Exercising and playing with his friend Kenny in the park, that's what this little dog likes best. He's two and a half years old, happy little soul, exuberant, lively, fun-loving. Smaller but similar qualities to what we've just seen with the Bull Terrier. Cannon Terriers were judged today by Linda Firth. Best of breed is this bitch, number 16520. Can would remember Holly is a two and a half year old Cannon Terrier bitch, owned by Pam Harding, bred by Chris and Philip Roberts. These are agile, alert, natural little dogs. That coat is very important, it's weather resistant, must be double coated, profuse, profuse, harsh top coat, 
and then the undercoat is shorter and softer. Minxy little face. The head small, but in proportion to the body and the ear set and expression, very important. Short, balanced little tail working away there. And we want a free moving stride. Those little forelegs reaching, reaching well forwards. Little dog who thinks he owns the ring, I think. Like lots of these little ones do. This is Cheska, the Chesky Terror. Six-year-old bitch owned by Wendy Tobyanski from Shropshire. She's handling there in the ring. Don't have CCs yet on this, but has six, 36 best of breeds. So some winning dog. National dog of the Czech Republic. Chesky's a gentle terrier for, for a terrier. Stands just about 12, just over a foot high, 32 centimeters at the withers, slightly longer in the back than he is high. Silky coat, requires trimming along his back and body, especially if he's going to be in the part of the family household, as the coat there exhibits that lovely, well shone look. Registered in the UK since 1990, the Chesky. Not many numbers here. But they could grow. Nice looking little dog. Moving very nicely there with these lovely feathered skirts. The best of breed winning Chesky Terrier, 16639. Now for the Dandy Dinmont Terrier. This male, number 16689, was preferred by Alan Curry. From 53 dogs, making 60 the Dandy Dinmont Terrier, bred and owned by Glenn Tinsley, handled by Hugo Quedo in the ring. That head is so distinctive of this breed, covered with a beauty, beautiful silky covering of hair. A longer body, look at that expression, those lovely large eyes make them so engaging. The breed standard gives you a veritable essay for the points of the head and the ears on this breed. And it's worth every word. Flexible on the move, those little short legs powering him round. And such a lovely shot of his facial expression coming towards you with that jaunty little top knot and the ears flying. Strong in action though, nonetheless. This might be cute, but it's every bit the terrier. Owned and bred by Mitnyan Janosch. I hope I've got that right. Handled in the ring by Mitnyan Gabosch. Uh, they're from Hungary. This is Lisa. It's a dog. And uh, I say they come from Hungary. Uh, the Smooth Fox Terrier. Both forms, smooth and wire, known throughout the world, but really from British origins. A very active, lively breed. Likened in the standard to a short-backed, well-made hunter. That makes sense, doesn't it? It covers a lot of ground. This is one of the most lively and alert of terriers, whose refinement to present show excellence hasn't allowed him to become one whit unsound. Look at the way it stands there. The tail held very firm and perky and high. Not really a dog you'd let loose on the countryside full of sheep, but ideally suited to life at home in a country or town. They're quite small enough to be uh, carried if necessary. Adjudicator of the wires was Hazel Bradford. Her best of breed is number 16795. Bread owned and handled by Anne Morn. This is the wire fox terrier, Bill Broccolicia Strike, just 22 months old and already with two CCs and three reserves. 
The head looks really strong with the addition of that wire coat on the jaws. Very particular trim to show the skull, the length of the head and the ears. Strong, well angulated, that means a nice curve to those back legs and the tail set, very important. High and the tail held up from the back. Coat is very important on the wire fox terrier, obviously. Dense, wiry texture, these lovely bright colours on a white background. A balanced looking dog that's every bit the terrier and a hell of a worker at home, given the opportunity. Very balanced in profile there, and a lot of dog behind the tail, as Frank always used to say to us, and you can see it really clearly there. This was bred by Joan Ruth Welsh, uh, and handled and uh, owned by Ruth Welsh. They come from Bognor Regis in Sussex. Seven-year-old Barney, looks a very happy chap indeed. 14 cc's to his name. It's a tough, robust dog, the Glen of Imal Terrier. There's a mix of being game and gentle at the same time about him. At first sight, they appear to be sort of, you know, little rough chaps. Harsh coat of blue in this case, or weak nor brindle, does confirm that view, but he is in fact a really good family companion. And that's a lovely steady movement at the front there. Not nearly as noisy as lots of other terriers. And despite his build, really much more active than one might expect. And he's taking a nice big triangle on the second run too. Make sure Paolo Dondini gets a chance to look at that movement properly. And now it's the turn of the Irish The sleek terrier. lines of the Irish Terrier. This one a champion and an American champion. Fleet Street Fenway fan. Five years old, bred by Carusi and Wodwodski. Owned by Tony Barker and Victor Malzoni Jr. Handled by John Averis in the ring. That head is long. The skull's this quite flat, not too wide between the ears. An intelligent expression. Long, strong neck flowing into those nicely placed shoulders. The coat's harsh and wiry, this wonderful crisp red color. It's got a sort of broken appearance, you can see there, although this is beautifully kept. Like most of the terriers, tail cranked off the back giving him a sense of attitude. I love the description in the standard of these dogs, a heedless, reckless pluck there is about the Irish Terrier, and you can see it in his movement there. Both the forelegs and the hind legs carried straight forward moving, nice and parallel, elbows nice and close to the body, level top line. Nice performance from the Irish Terrier. Cathy Delmar came from Ireland to judge this Irish breed, the Kerry Blue Terrier. And best so of here we have the Kerry Blue Terrier. It's a four year old bitch known as Chelsea. Has a lot of owners, all from America. Ed and Lynn Yingling and Candace Brock and Phil Davis and both the dog and the handler who is Bill McFadden live in California. The Kerry Blue, the coat really is a great feature of this breed. Puppies are actually born black then they can take up to 18 months to change into this nice blue, this grey blue. The coat itself is soft, silky resembling astrakhan the dog doesn't shed its coat 
These dogs are really quite extrovert at heart. So the Kerry is a very compact, spirited dog, very adaptable. Understandably, like all terriers, fond of outdoor pursuits, likes water, very easily trained. The breed reached its peak back in the 1920s. There were four breed clubs registered in Ireland, and the Kerry Blue made up more than 25% of Irish Kennel Club registrations. Extraordinary. Very attractive breed. Sonny has come all the way from Germany to compete here at Crufts, owned by F.W. Schoenberg, handled by his breeder, Andrew Westwood, in the ring tonight. This breed is another terrier whose it's a smart, workmanlike little terrier. Powerful jaws under that beautifully coiffed fur. Again, a flat skull you can see, similar to previous terriers, not too wide between those little folded ears. Sleek neck making him carry his head proudly. The chest in the Lakeland isn't too deep, so it has a slightly narrower appearance than some of the other terriers. Nice and parallel coming towards you. Head carried proudly on that arch neck. Tail cranked up with terrier attitude. Another one with a dense, harsh and weather-resistant coat. Good undercoat under there too. And kept in fine fettle like this, beautifully stripped out, really showing the dog's lines. Roxy here is a five-year-old uh, bitch, comes from South Yorkshire, Sheffield. Mick Jill and Stacey Oxley own this Manchester Terrier. A good-looking black and tan dog with the advantage of that lovely smooth coat. The name, of course, denotes the origin. It's likely when you look at the breed, you can see there's uh, probably some whippet in his ancestry. They really are elegant and graceful, bred as a ratter. Although, as I say, a ratter, there's nothing sharp about him with humans. He's a sporting companion, very agile, non-aggressive, fits into any environment, town or country. That lovely sort of hackney, hackney movement with the uh, as he steps out. I know he's all that happy on the AstroTurf, but now he's looking looking better there. That's nice. And now reaching forward nicely with those four legs. The Norfolk Terrier, this one Belleville burning passion, judged by Peter Green here at Crufts, of course, a tremendous aficionado of the breed, bred, owned and handled by Cathy Thompson Morgan. It's one of the smallest of the terriers in the group. Look at that cheeky expression, though. Even the standard requires it to be a demon for its size. Low set, keen little dog, hard, wiry, straight coat lying nice and close to the body. All shades of red, wheaten, black and tan and grizzle. This one, a lovely red and wheaten. Little V-shaped ears folded. Norfolk with the F and the folded ears. You'll get an origin in a minute who has pointed ears. Low to the ground, but the movement should be nice and true. Driving from behind. Lovely balance in profile there. And here we see, same dog, no pointed ears, must be the Norwich. This is Paris, 15 months old. Leslie Crawley and Matthew Oddy owns this, uh, this uh, little dog in Selby in Yorkshire. First CC today. I'm told this one's a real clown at home, loves barking. Really nice attitude, very outgoing. 
Norwich ter Terriers were accepted on the Kennel Club Breed Register in 1932 when they were known as the drop-eared Norwich, now known as the Norfolk, and the prick-eared Norwich, this one of course. The Norwich and Norfolk were shown together as one breed until 1964. But they do resemble each other, almost every aspect. Very similar there in movement as we saw before. This one not moving quite so quickly, but it is smooth, it's nicely driven from the back. And these are lovely, alert, sharp little dogs and delightful companions. Nothing jerky there in the movement, it's lovely. Ringo, two and a half year old dog. He's a Parson Russell Terrier bred by Margaret Hooley, owned by Margaret and Mark. Margaret handling in the ring, they come from Derby. Essentially, the Parson Russell is a real working terrier. Slightly up on the leg, he's able to keep up with the foxhounds but of course go to ground after a fox if necessary. Naturally harsh, wiry coat, kept in good condition by being mostly stripped by the undergrowth when he's out working. Compact, firm little feet there, scooting around the astro turf, keeping a lovely level top line and a steady head carriage. Ladies and gentlemen, the Parson Russell Terrier. One, two, five, the Parson Russell Terrier. The Scottish Terrier. The, the instantly recognisable Scottish Terrier. This one's had a long journey here, come from Maryland in the United States. This is American champion McVans Bebop Baby three years old, well not quite yet, uh, two years and eight months old. Very popular short-led dog, originally from the Highlands of Scotland, sturdy and low slung. More often thought of like this one as black, but he can have a striking wheat nor brindle colored coat as well. The public image, I suppose, is that of a, a really dour Scot, but they can be very affectionate and very cheerful. The Scottish Terrier Club was formed by Captain Gordon Murray in 1882, a year after the first standard for the breed was drawn up, and just three years after the breed as we know it today came into existence. That's a lovely move, and I love the, the, the way they kick against the skirts as they go along. Lots of fringing there, this lovely coat, tremendous whiskers, little American visitor. This breed is seen less and less these days. Champion and American champion, Bloomingdale's born in USA at Thunder Road. Dewar is two years old, bred by Sarah Hawkes, owned in partnership with Mrs. J. Bledge and handled by Marjorie Good in the ring. The Celium, of course, a breed that we almost lost, and that would have been an absolute tragedy. Such a smart little terrier, this. Balanced and of great substance for such a small dog. Slightly domed skull there. Jaws described as punishing under that coat. And of course, this is a terrier designed to take a snap with those jaws at vermin and dispatch them instantly. Medium in length. As this one goes, we should see a lively stride, very flexible on the move. Well sprung ribs, nice level top line. Those feet are round, almost cat-like under the fur. Brisk and vigorous on the move. And a delightful little show person. I think the uh, breeder, handler and owner, Sue Breeze, of this Sky Terrier must be a Chelsea supporter. He's a two-year-old dog called Lampard. Loves playing with his toys, playing football and having a cuddle. Well, don't lots of dogs, but that's one here, one of the oldest Scottish breeds, the Sky Terrier. 
His long coat makes him into a very glamorous dog, but that requires a good weekly brushing and occasional bathing to keep him in good condition. The plus to that, really, is the coat rarely sheds. But because he's low to the ground, you do get mud sticking to all those furnishings. You can see they're almost to the ground right the way along there. But it can be quickly brushed out when dry. The, eye, the ears on this uh, chap held up, but they can actually hang flat against the skull as well when they're known as the drop-eared the drop version, but this one isn't, and that's the distinctive look of the sky. Nice broad head, nice long body, the coat flowing freely and the driving legs at the back kicking out against the skirts, moving very happily here in the giant ring at the LG Arena at the NEC. The Sky Terrier, Lampard. The soft-coated Wheaton champion Fantaza Blonde Chaos, four years old and with 25 challenge certificates to his credit already, owned, bred and handled by Liz Dunhill. As you can see there, this is a medium-sized terrier, not as compact as some of the others we've seen. Upstanding, covered all over with that wonderful, soft, Wheaton-coloured coat. Naturally falls in these lovely waves. Very loose curls, should never be tightly curled. The soft coated Wheaton Terrier has a happy go lucky outlook, befitting his Irish background. Delightful expression. This is an active terrier. In fact, those who own and live with them would probably back me up in saying they can be lunatics, but in the most delightful way. Powerful in the body, well sprung ribs, quite nice and deep. Holding top line nicely on the move there and powering round the ring. The delightful soft coated Wheaton. And now for the Staffordshire Bull Terrier. This breed is so popular, it requires. Two year, ten months old Alfie, this lovely dog here, Staffordshire Bull Terrier, beat 344 others to take his best of breed today for owner Martin Sherlock from Ireland in Dublin. The handler actually in the ring is Robin Melia. The breather was Robin Reed. Overall best breed winner was the male, 17902. Largest entry in the group, obviously, one of the most popular of all the Terriers. The staff is renowned for his courage. Has in the past led it into a bad reputation, which is totally undeserved. Kindness, great with children. Very well known in that respect. He's descended from a cross between the Bulldog and the Terrier, and thus combines the temperance of the two breed. But that's a beautifully muscled, well-shaped dog, moving beautifully. Great favourite in the show ring. And he's got traditionally rugged looks, I think, will be fair. But those muscles on the hind quarters, very finely defined, as are the shoulder muscles too. Champion Alok in August morning, handled by Andrew Hunt, owned by Sally Poole, who also bred her. She's two years old as Queenie. Characteristic colours of the Welsh Terrier, that nice clean head, little V-shaped ears, framing her face. Not quite sure whether she likes being gone over, that's better. Wiry, hard coat, close and abundant. Always a double coat, as it is in most of these terrier breeds. They need to be weather resistant, real workman like little dogs, all of them. Balanced in outline, this one. Full of courage. Full of vitality, the Welsh Terrier loves nothing more than exercise and outdoor pursuits. A cheerful spirit, good with children. <laughs> I've had enough of this. I'm going to play. Really playing to the crowd tonight. Right up on its toes, isn't it? As it's indeed it should be. And he's making the most of it. Nice top she line, deep chest there. Nine, eight, five, the Welsh Terrier. And trying to power from behind a little bit too hard, perhaps. <laughs> trying to take off. Still 
somewhat different shape here with the last dog on the table. The classic West Highland White Terrier. One of the most popular of the terrier breeds, cheerful and outgoing. This is Benny, he's three and a half years old, owned by Carol Hoofnagel from Bellwood in Canada. Crystal Murray actually handling in the ring, and Carol was the breather as well as the owner. This is an American and Canadian champion, won a lot of groups, first year at Crufts. Welcome to you, nice to have you here. Very happy and laid back dog. These make an ideal companion and playmate for youngsters. They're full of fun. They're virtually tireless. All is ready for a walk, come snow or shine. Small enough to pick up and carry if they're not doing what you want them to do. Really an all-purpose pet. This harsh coat requires regular brushing and combing, and it's as well to have him professionally trimmed two or three times a year if you want him to keep into a nice, smart appearance like that. Isn't that lovely? Beautiful on the move, very perky, very ready to show. So Paolo Dondina making his selection now from the Terrier group. The first of them to be pulled out is the King of Terriers, the Airedale. Then the little Border Terrier. The Dandy Dinmont. The Irish Terrier, the Kerry Blue, who's after the Irish. <laughs> and the little Lakeland, three in a row. He's taken the Norfolk and the Norwich. Both the Norwich and the Norfolk. The Celium, and that's it. He raises his hands to say, that's my selection. Congratulations to everybody else. But this is our final cut. A lovely cut of nine varying shapes and sizes from the largest, the Airedale, to the smallest, the Norwich and Norfolk. So he's going to move them again now, and we begin with the Airedale Terrier. Champion Jockill time to party, Fizz, owned, bred by Olive Jackson and Mary Swash, handled by Mary in the ring. Of course, a terrier exhibitor we've seen in this big ring so many times before, always with lovely examples of her favoured breed. And unfortunately, the Swedish owner of the Border Terrier hasn't given us any information at all about this. It isn't a dog that we know. Uh, it's young, it's uh, only two and a half years old. That's all we know about it, other than its main kennel name. Uh, it's owned by Mrs. H. Bergsted from Kagerod in Sweden. The little dandy Dinmont, Cloverwood Royal George, owned by Glenn Tinsley, who also bred him, handled by Hugo Cuedo in the ring. The Irish Terrier. And the Irish Terrier then here. Champion and American champion. This is Finn, five-year-old, owned by Tony Barker and Victor Malzoni Jr. They actually live in Utoxeter, Staffordshire, handled in the ring by John Averis. Looking very fit, that Irish Terrier. <laughs> Bit of temperament there from the Kerry Blue, English and American champion, Perry's Blue, Kenners Lane, Chelsea. Handled in the ring by Bill McFadden, who won't be remotely phased by having a Kerry Blue say, yeah, let's get him. And next, the Lakeland Terrier, one, six, nine, And the Lakeland, and I think this one's moving absolutely beautifully again, right on the toes there. This is Sonny, a three-year-old dog, come from Hereford in Germany, owned by F.W. Schonenberg. Andrew Westwood handling there in the ring for us. And the, and the first of our little demons, the Norfolk Terrier, Belleville Burning Passion. Oscar, Kathy Thompson Morgan at the helm, and he couldn't hope for anyone better in the case of this breed. 
Paolo Dondina taking a good look at the movement coming back towards him. At this level, it's got to be just right. And now it's the Norwich. And now the Norwich. Little 15 month old Paris. Little young dog here from Yorkshire. Outgoing. I'm told his glass is always at least half full. Born on Christmas Day. And last but not least, this lovely Celium, champion and American champion, Bloomingdale's, born in USA at Thunder Road, Dewar. Handled by Marjorie Good, bred by Sarah Hawks, owned in partnership with Mrs. Bledge. And that is a very interesting selection that Paolo Dandina has chosen. Very varied, every type of terrier there in the, in the lineup, all different shapes and sizes. Many similar, just large down to the small version of the same shape, but some slightly different, like the dandy. He's moving them all around. They're going past the boards, led by Mary Swash. No stranger to this. I can remember interviewing her many years ago. Lovely lady and a wonderful handler of her own breed. I think what our judge is indicating to us is that he's got a group of terriers of superb quality. He wants us to see them all again before he makes his choice. Well, they're being well appreciated by this massive crowd. 6,000 people here on Best in Show Night, the final night of Crufts 2012, the world's greatest dog show, truly international in flavour now. Of the Terrier Group, Crufts 2012. He's going to one of the small ones. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, He's a showman. He's a, a lovely showman. response from the crowd. He's going back. Oh, he's giving it to the Norwich. The Norwich Terrier takes it. Paris, 15 month old, this young dog. Oh, wonderful. From Yorkshire. And in second spot in the Terrier Group Cross 2012. The Kerry Blue. The Kerry Blue. Chelsea. This visitor from America. And the Irish. George, the Dandy Dinmont, gets Group 4. But the winner, the Norwich Terrier. Well, that is a lovely choice. Look at that happy little face. First CC today, and it wins the group at Crufts. Now, that's an achievement. Welcome to Dr. Jerry Davis, president of the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons, who's going to make the presentation, escorted by Gerald King, chairman of Crufts Committee. You probably heard that from the ring announcer. The awards presented by Dr. Jerry Davis, president of the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons. Escorted into the ring there by Gerald King. What a happy lady there with her wonderful Norwich that has taken this group. The trophy much bigger than the little dog, bigger than Paris. That's a lovely picture. Thanks very much, she said. Oh. Proud Yorkshire lady. There we go. And a rosette that's almost as big as the dog as well. <laughs> Bigger. <laughs> Don't pin it to the dog. And the Kerry Blue in second place there. All the way from California. Well, I've really enjoyed this group. A lot of pleasure there, and now a very the satisfying the result for the crowd here. Let's hear it for the winner. A very big crowd. Here we go, Little Paris. One year, three months old. First CC today takes the group, the Terrier group at Crufts 2012, and will be in tonight's competition for best in show.